it's 2 10 a.m and i'm gonna create some sort of an animation in the next 15 minutes. The idea is to challenge myself and see exactly what I can come up with in 15 minutes at most. So with that, I'm actually gonna start the timer and you're gonna see the entire ideation and creation process. So let's begin the timer now. So in my default scene, the main idea that I'm thinking of right now is to have some sort of crystals. Maybe I'll have a cluster of crystals pointing out towards the two sides. It might be similar to maybe this particular video, but let's actually see what happens as I move on with the project. So I'll bring my cursor to the junction of these two windows, click and drag to create a new window, and I'll switch this to the geometry node editor. Then I'll press this plus button to create a new geometry node tree. And I think the first thing that I'll do is create a crystal. So let's remove the group input and let's actually use a curve line to actually create the crystal. So let's plug this in right here. And now I think I'll just increase the end to maybe 1.5 to make it a bit longer. And I want three points to be present. So let's press Shift A and search for a count node or a resample curve node. I'm going to be making mistakes here and there and all of it's going to be present in the video itself. Now let's recount it down to three. And there should be one point at the top, one in the center, one at the bottom. I want to move the central one a bit more towards the top. So let's search for a set position and let's plug that in right here. And let's offset just the middle point on the Z axis. So for that, I have to search for an index node and then I'll have to search for a compare node so that I can compare if the index is equal to one because I know that there are three points, which means the indices are zero, one, two. So I'll change it to integer and I'll say that if this integer is equal to a value of one, only then should this set position work. So let's take this result, plug it into the selection and offset the Z value by a bit. Now I can't actually see the points. So to see the points, let's actually search for an instance on points or Let's just search for a curve to points node. And that way I'll be able to see the points. So, okay, no, this is not gonna work. Let's use an instance on point itself. And let's plug the geometry into the points and the instances into the instance. And now let's just maybe use a UV sphere for now to just preview this. So let's plug that in to the instance and let's scale this down to maybe 0 0.1. And all right, now if I just move this on the Z, I can get it closer and that way I can just change the radius for this point to make it a nice crystal shape. So something like that is the shape that I'm going for now. Okay. So I have to now figure out how to do that. I have three points necessary. I have to set the radius. So let's search for a set curve radius node and then plug that in right here. And okay. Yeah. I don't need this anymore because I was just visualizing it. So let's control X and there. Now for the selection, I'm going to use the same thing and I'm going to make this radius maybe 0.4 while the rest of them can have a radius of zero. So let's just press shift D and make this zero. So now if I search for a curve to mesh and use the profile curve as a curve circle, so let's search for curve to mesh and just plug that in there for the profile curve. Let's use a curve circle and see what we have. Okay. Let's plug this in here. And that's exactly the shape that I wanted. So that's perfect. Let's change the resolution down to something like five and I need it to be shaded smooth. So let's press shift a search for a set shade smooth node, plug that in right here, switch that off. And yeah, that looks absolutely perfect. Let's just increase this Z offset a bit. And um, okay, let's go with something like that itself. Okay, now I want to make this even more of a crystal by adding in some randomness. So Maybe let's just start by adding some more geometry to this. Maybe let's use a subdivision surface or a subdivide mesh. Let's press shift A, search for a subdivide mesh node. Let's see what this creates. Okay, that looks okay. Let's, um, okay, maybe I can convert these to triangles and then use a dual mesh. So let's just search for a triangulate node and then a dual mesh. So let's just switch this back off into solid mode, okay. Now dual mesh, plug that in right here. And okay, that does not look great. Keep boundaries, of course. And um, yeah, that's not looking like a crystal. Um, what should I do? Maybe subdivide it a bit more, see if that helps. No, that is not helping. Let's remove, okay, let's maybe merge by distance first. Shift A, merge by distance, plug that in right here. Let's maybe increase the levels now. No, that's still not looking good. So let's delete that. Let's delete this as well. X to delete, 
plug that in triangulate dual mesh okay let's see what can be done okay what if i dual mesh it before no that is also not working at all maybe that subdivide mesh was something good itself press shift a search for the subdivide mesh node let's plug that in here this in there okay let's see what this looks like let's remove the dual mesh so Control x to delete it and maybe let's move these faces see there are quite a few points let's move them a bit randomly so let's use some noise textures so shift a search for a set position node plug that in here offset it with some noise so shift a search for a noise texture now again noise textures are centered around 0 0.5 so let's search for a vector math node plug that in here subtract a value of 0.5 I have less than 10 minutes remaining. This is, okay, let's scale this down a bit. So press shift A, search for a vector math node, change it to scale. And let's just reduce the strength. And okay, I think I'm just gonna be happy with this particular weird shape. Okay, maybe let's just subdivide the entire surface once. So shift A, search for a subdivide surface node. Let's plug that in there and okay. Let's just increase the edge crease and the vertex crease. So that's good. Okay, this is now my crystal shape. Let's see what that looks like. With 8.3 minutes left, okay, eight and a half minutes, let's see how do I cluster this. To cluster this, maybe I can just get a bunch of points. So let's search for a points node. And let's instance on these points and give them some random rotations. Or, or maybe I can just use an icosphere. That way I have all of these points present. I can increase the number of subdivisions to get a nice number of points. Or I can just distribute some points on these faces. That way I'll get the rotation as well. So distribute points on faces, plug that in there. Now let's instance on points. So shift A, instance on points, plug that in right there. And let's take this as the instance. And that looks great. Now I have this rotation value. I can just plug that into the rotation. And okay, that looks great. Let's randomize the scale. Shift A, search for a random value node, and then plug that in right there. And that should be good enough. Awesome. So that's great. Oh, okay, I was initially planning on having some lines here and some lines there like a path, but okay, I'll just go with this for now because I have seven and a half minutes remaining. Okay, now let's start off with the actual material. So let's press Shift A, search for a set material node. Plug that in right here and choose the default material and play around with it. So let's switch over to the shader editor. Let's come here and okay. The idea could be to have some nice bright object in the center surrounded by all of these crystals. So let's give this a crystal material. So for now, let's press period on the numpad to centralize the nodes. Then let's go ahead and, okay, uh, because all of these won't refract anyways. Okay, let's just keep this at a complete metallic, reduce the roughness to maybe 0 0.3. Let's see what this looks like. Uh, okay, this is already what it looks like. Switch off overlays and take this light, press Alt G. All right, that's, something let's make the world background all the way to black okay now nothing outside this can be seen so let's take this light let's shift d to duplicate it and then let's increase its radius so that even the outsides get some amount of light okay that looks good let's make the radius like 10 meters and all right that's something if this rotates what does it look like okay no if we take sorry okay if we just take this and rotate it Maybe this could be the animation itself. Let's just switch on some blue. Let's switch on screen space reflections, see what we have. Okay, now I have five minutes remaining. Okay, let's see. For the time being, let's press this into some sort of a color. Okay, that looks great. Okay, okay, let's see. Let's actually animate this in the geometry node section itself a bit more. Let's have these actual particles move up and down. Let's press Shift A, search for a set position node. And let's use this looping noise. If you haven't checked out my looping noise tutorial, check that out. I will be making one for geometry nodes, but 
for the time being, I'm just gonna use my asset browser to create some looping noise. So in the asset browser, let's just switch this over to motion graphics. Let's find the looping noise node tree. All of this takes some time to load, but it's still better than actually creating it. Find it. I should have organized this a bit better. Let's see, looping noise, let's bring that in right there. Let's join this together again. And with my looping noise texture, I can just plug this in. I'll have to change the offset to 0 0.5. Let's go ahead and increase the max W to maybe 0 0.3. Loop frames 150. So let's have to set all of those defaults as well. Now displacement, maybe let's give it five. Let's change this end frame to 150. Let's go to the output properties, change it to 30 frames per second. End frame is already 150. Let's just keep it at that. Let's play the animation. And okay, that is moving everything. Why is that moving everything? Instance, we have the instances on points. We are setting position for all of these by this. Okay, okay, we have to add in the position as the vector. So let's take a position node, plug that into the vector and yeah. That looks great. Now let's actually create the animation. Let's place the camera first. Let's select the camera, Alt G, Alt, Articular Location, Rotation, R, X, 90. I have three minutes remaining, G, Y to just bring it back. Zero to go into the camera view. Let's go to the camera properties, change this to maybe 18, wide angle, G, Y, move it back in. Okay, viewport display, increase this, passport out all the way to one. That's great. Now let's go ahead and rotate this like that. So to give this sort of a rotation, uh, maybe I can just, use some object constraints to make this faster. So shift A, curve, circle, RX 90, GY, move it right here. Let's make this 64 to make it nice and smooth. Let's add in an empty, shift A, empty plane axes. Let's give this a constraint to move along that Bezier circle. So follow path of this Bezier circle, okay. Now this, we're gonna go ahead and go to the constraints itself, add in maybe Let's see, a track to constraint. Let's track it to this empty that we just created. Now for the empty, let's go ahead and give the offset some keyframes. So on frame zero, let's go ahead and add in a keyframe. Then on frame 150, let's change this to 100 and then add in a keyframe down here, T linear, okay? So that is rotating. Let's go into our camera view. Let's see, let's just, scale this up a bit more and yeah okay that looks absolutely perfect now we definitely need something in the background for this to reflect off of so let's press shift a mesh plane rx 90 s scale it up oh oh wow this actually looks really nice i like the shadows i was thinking of giving some texture maybe i should just keep it like this itself the shadows will okay wait let's first give this its material so let's go to the materials add in a new material Let's change this base color to something maybe slightly bluish, okay. Metallic value, let's increase that all the way to one. Okay, now there's much lesser reflections. If I start reducing the roughness, it'll go down even more. Let's make the roughness 0 0.3. Let's make this metallic also maybe a value of 0 0.6. Okay, let's go with 0 0.8. Something like that looks good. All right, that looks, okay, wait, maybe we can just move this behind the entire object. Oh, oh wow, that looks even better. Okay, yeah, that looks like a really nice texture. We have the entire object as well present. Maybe I want to just scale this object up by a bit or maybe the icosphere. Let's actually increase the size of the icosphere. I have one minute, 20 seconds left at most. So let's go ahead, let's see, where's that icosphere? This is why you should keep everything organized so that you know exactly where your objects are. Okay, let's start increasing this radius. Oh, that also increases the number of points. I forgot about that. Okay, let's make the radius 1.5 and let's reduce this density from 10. Actually, this doesn't look too bad. I actually like this. Maybe let's increase the displacement. So over here, let's just increase this displacement to maybe seven. Okay, and yeah, I think that looks like a really cool animation when I um, render this out. It should all be good. Let's just come here and switch on a little bit of motion blur. Maybe I'll reduce the shutter to 0 0.3. I have 40 seconds remaining, so I won't be able to test any of these out. But yeah, I think that's all there is. FFmpeg video encoding Matroska to MPEG-4 and the output quality as per sub lossless. With that, I have 26 seconds remaining. Output folder, I can store it. That's fine. And 
yeah, maybe I can just render out a test image, see how that looks. 15 seconds remaining, 14 seconds. It's probably gonna take more than 10 seconds just to render out this frame. Okay, that looks good. The motion blur is not too much. So I will play around with the shadows before hitting the render. So that is it for my 15 minutes. And with that, this is the final render with maybe just a few minor adjustments here and there. Thank you so much for staying with me throughout this journey. I hope you learned something along the way. I know this wasn't a step-by-step -step tutorial and I did go faster than what I generally go. And of course, I have a lot of complaints about how I already go fast, so this must have been much faster. But I hope this gave you an insight as to the many mistakes that someone might make while creating an animation like this, the thought processes, and the way an initial idea sometimes completely changes to something random when you're on a complete time crunch. But the fact that when you know certain techniques, you can apply them in many different areas and in different ways. If you liked this video, definitely check out other videos on my channel. I post videos every single day and most of them are tutorials. So we will be going step by step and explaining why we're doing what we're doing. If you want some more explanations to this, do let me know and I will create that as well. Until my next video comes out tomorrow, thank you so much for watching. Keep creating and don't forget to stay creative.